When learning to do fractions, the first thing you have to do is learn how to put them together. Fractions have two parts, a top number and a bottom number. The top number refers to the part that we're looking at, and the bottom number is the whole amount, whatever it is that we're looking at. If you had a pie with four pieces, one, two, three, and four, then the whole pie is four, so four will go on the bottom. Now if the question asks you to count out how many pieces are shaded, in this first one, there's only one piece that's shaded, so the fraction is 1 over 4. One part is shaded out of 4 that make up the whole unit. If the same pie with 4 pieces, this time has 1, 2, 3 pieces shaded, your fraction will be 3 over 4, or 3 fourths. This same information will come in handy if you're doing word problems. For example, if a child was reading a book which had a total of 20 pages and they've already completed 17 of those pages, what fraction have they read? Well, they've read 17 twentieths, 17, the part that they've read, over 20, the whole number of pages in the book. There are different ways to write numbers. If the top number is smaller than the bottom, like 1 over 3 or 6 over 7, these are known as proper fractions. Again, the top number is smaller than the bottom. If the top number is larger than the bottom, like these examples here, 4 over 3 or 9 over 6, these are improper fractions. Fractions that have the same number on top as well as on bottom are also improper. And lastly, we have whole numbers with fractions beside them, like 1 and 1 half, or 5 and 3 fourths. These are known as mixed numbers because, of course, they have a whole number and a fraction beside them. Here in a little bit, we're going to learn how to change from one type of fraction to another. But before we get to that, we'll have to learn how to reduce our fractions. Reducing fractions is pretty easy if you know how to divide. All we're doing is taking the top number and the bottom number and dividing them both by the same number. So of course you're going to have to know what will divide evenly into both of these numbers. In this case, 3 and 6. We can divide both of them by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives us 1, and 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. The fraction 3 over 6 reduces down to 1 half. For the fraction 4 over 12, we can take a couple of different routes. This time, we can divide both of these numbers by 2, and get 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. But then we'll have to reduce again, because 2 and 6 are both divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 giving us 1, and 6 divided by 2 leaving us with 3. Our final fraction here is 1 third. We could have instead gone back to the original fraction, 4 over 12. Divide both of these by 4. Because 4 divided by 4, of course, gives us 1. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. Both ways get us to 1 third. One route did take a little bit longer, but it'll be easier to identify the numbers that divide evenly into both the top and the bottom number. This time we have a slightly larger number. Well, quite large. It's 200 over 400. There's a trick, though, with these. As long as there's a zero on the top and a zero on the bottom, you can scratch them both out like they don't exist. So a zero and a zero, and then here again we can take another set of zeros. This just leaves us 2 over 4. Well, we can divide both of these by 2. 2 divided by 2, of course, is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 200 over 400 ends up becoming 1 over 2. By taking the shortcut and getting rid of the zeros, we cut out a lot of time. Be careful, though. If you had been given 250 over 400, we can only eliminate one of the zeros, because this zero doesn't have one on the top to cancel out with it. Now we have 25 over 40. But we can reduce this by 5, because 25 divided by 5 gives us 5. 40 divided by 5 leaves us with 8. This fraction reduces down to 5 over 8. Here are a few additional problems for you to work it on your own. We have 6 over 10, 4 over 16, 7 over 42, and 300 over 1800. 
I'll give you a moment to write these down and solve them yourself before I solve them for you, and you can check your answer against mine. 6 over 10, both of these are reducible by 2. 6 turns into a 3, and 10 divided by 2 turns into a 5. The final answer is 3 over 5. 4 over 16, a couple of different ways we could do this. This one does, however, end up becoming 1 over 4. 7 over 42 ends up becoming 1 over 6. Both numbers are divisible by 7. Sevens are tricky for some people, so it may have taken you a little bit of time. If it didn't, good for you. And lastly, 300 over 1800. I hope you remember the zeros trick on this one, because we can eliminate those, two, those four zeros immediately. That just leaves us 3 over 18. Threes are another number that are tricky for some people. This one, we can divide by 3, gives us 1, and 18 divided by 3 turns into 6. Our final answer in this one, 1 over 6. Along with being able to reduce fractions, you'll often have to raise fractions. This one, 4 over 5, is equal to another fraction, a blank space over 20. All we have to do is think to ourselves, 5 times what equals 20? In this case, it's 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Whatever you do to the bottom of the fraction, you'll have to do to the top as well. So 4 times 4 gives us 16 on top. These fractions, 4 fifths and 16 over 20, are the same. Sometimes you'll have to raise fractions in the middle of your problem before you can actually solve for an answer. Here are a few for you to practice on. 16 over 32 turns into something over 64. 4 fifths turns into something over 10. And lastly, 3 over 13 turns into something over 26. Again, I'll give you time to solve these on your own before I produce the answers. In this one, 32 times 2 gives us 64. So all we have to do is take the top number times 2 as well. And 16 times 2 is 32. On this one, we're again multiplying by just 2. 4 times 2 gives us 8 on top. And in the last one, again, we're multiplying times 2. We're not always going to be doing that, but it was easiest to come up with some samples that only involved us multiplying times 2. Again, it's important to make sure that you're comfortable with both multiplying and dividing before you begin fraction work. Remember earlier when we saw that there were different ways to write fractions, proper, improper, or mixed numbers? Well, now we're going to learn how to change them from one kind to another. This sample here is an improper fraction, 6 over 5, with the 6 being larger than the 5. We can change it, however, into a mixed number, which is often how your answers will need to be given. Fractions are the same thing as dividing. 6 over 5 is the same thing as 6 divided by 5. So how many times does 5 go into 6? Well, of course, it only goes one time. And 1 times 5 is 5, leaves us with 1. Now these are all of the numbers that we need to put together a mixed number. How many whole times did 5 fit into 6? Well, it went one time. And how many pieces were left over? 1. The 1 is what goes on top of our new fraction. And we keep that same bottom number as part of our mixed number answer. So 6 over 5, through division, turns into 1 and 1 fifth. It's a little tricky at first, so we'll go through a few more. This time we have 7 over 4. Again, an improper fraction. We are going to change it into a mixed number. 7 over 4 is again 7 divided by 4. 4 will divide into 7 one time, with 3 left over, because 1 times 4 is 4, and we just subtract 4 from our 7 to give us a remainder if we were just dealing with regular division. But since we're using fractions, we're going to use that remainder as part of our answer. Again, how many times did it 4 actually fit into 7? It fit one time. 
The leftover part was that 3 turns into the top number of our fraction. And 4 was our bottom number, so we'll keep that 4. 7 over 4 turns into 1 and 3 fourths. I'll give you a few samples to do on your own before providing the answers. Here are some problems for you to work out. 21 over 10, 14 over 7, and 16 over 6. 21 over 10 is the same thing as 21 divided by 10. 10 fits into 21 twice, with 2 times 10 giving us 20, with 1 left over. It went in 2 times, with 1 left over, and keep your same 10 as a bottom number. 21 over 10 turns into 2 and 1 tenths. On the second sample, 14 over 7, this one does throw some people, because 14 divided by 7 is just 2. There's nothing left over. Don't bother writing any kind of a fraction after the whole number 2. That's your whole answer, just a 2. And lastly, 16 over 6 may have caused some trouble as well. 16 divided by 6 is going to be 2, because 2 times 6 is 12. Now we have 4 left over. So we went 2 times with 4 over 6 as our leftover part. But remember, reduce if possible. 4 over 6 does reduce, because we can divide both 4 and 6 by 2 to turn it into 2 thirds. So put your whole number and your fraction together again into a mixed number is 2 and 2 thirds. So 16 over 6 eventually turns into 2 and 2 thirds. Mixed numbers can be turned into improper fractions too, just a way to go back and forth from one variety of fraction to another, because in some instances you will have to use one kind or another, or it may be to your benefit to use one kind or another in solving a fraction problem. Two and one half. All we have to do is take the bottom number, multiply it times the whole number, and add the top number. So we have two times two is four, plus that one gives us five. Now that'll go on top. We'll want to keep the same bottom number, two. So two and one half turns into five over two. Another example, three and four fifths. Three times five is fifteen. Fifteen plus four gives us nineteen. And yes, we'll keep that same bottom number in this one too, five. It turns into nineteen over five. Here are some examples for you to work. Three and one third. Three times three is nine, plus one is ten. 10 over 3. 7 times 4 is 28. 28 plus 6 is 34. 34 over 7. See, it's pretty easy to change from one type of fraction to another. Next, we'll be learning how to use these fractions to actually add and subtract and multiply and divide.